<laughs> no. <laughs> or if it is, I haven't determined what. There's more than enough going yeah. on. Right? Yeah. Okay. The glorious October morning. It was a day in October fanned by gentle breezes, greeted by bluebirds swooping downward, riding on the wind. The telephone rang, and our neighbor announced that someone had stolen a car and had driven it into our field of goldenrod and high weeds to the edge of Margaret Creek, where it was abandoned. I looked out the window and was surprised to see the top of a red car down by the creek, and there was also a sheriff's car with two deputies out in the weeds. By the time I walked down the road, two other cars had stopped. In one of these, a young woman was crying. It was her car that had been stolen during the night, apparently by three males who were drunk. <laughs> Good grief. A glorious morning. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, it was the weirdest thing because we have this whole lineup on the road. Some people were trying to, to get around and couldn't and mm. it was well, it happens on those country roads. Your way back. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, so often something like this is wants to find out mayhem <laughs> on some kind of drugs and the yeah. wild that's what insanity. Um, well they got stuck because they you know ended up right at the edge of Margaret Creek mm -hmm. and just abandoned it. So we have no idea who these people were. Mm -hmm. They yeah. jumped in the creek Glad and they walked away to cover yeah. their tracks. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, in the third line, I think bluebirds is one word, if you mean the actual eastern bluebird. Yes. Because uh, otherwise it could, could be a J or could it be a no. You're right. Bunting or I didn't notice that. <laughs> I didn't know if I got one. Hey, and also in the second stanza, the second line from the bottom, Creek should be capitalized because Margaret Creek is the, yeah. the proper name. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. Right. A few weeks ago, I I take a walk several times a week at the, on the bike path from the West uh, Union mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. park at the end of the entrance drive and, and walk on the bike path because it's level and I'm not allowed to walk up and down hills. <laughs> My knees have <laughs> not allowed that. <laughs> and anyway, so I got there this morning and there were cars in the road. How can, how can I get to my parking spot? And then there were more cars and then I see there was police cars and so on. And uh, it turns out that there was a big turnout of everybody because uh, some guy, I forget the details, it was reported in the newspaper in another day or so, but some guy had driven in there and he had a, a home cooking uh, meth lab oh. Oh, in okay. his car. Oh. In his car? <laughs> yeah, oh. Apparently. Oh. Yeah. And so he was sitting there sleeping, I guess, in the car and someone reported it as <laughs> suspicious and so it all came in. All the fancy vehicles. It, it's not unusual it's for them to have them in their car. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. yeah a meth lab is just a jug or something, yeah. right? I don't know how they do it, but I know they, it is self-contained. And yeah. people who do that kind of stuff aren't, you know, they don't think like the rest of us do. I hope they don't vote. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, mean, I don't know if they're right. Take the vote anywhere. All right. Oh, sorry.
I have the water right now, so I'm unbathed. Oh, well, pardon me while I'm here. Yeah, well, I'm going to be more chairs for me to odoriferize. That's fine. <laughs> or something like that, I'm gay. Wouldn't that be good? Isn't that a nice word? Wouldn't that be a good word? It is a good word. It is a good word. It's quite a contraction. You have to hung on your belt. Yeah. Uh-huh, and also... Is that self-defense or...? Well... Wow, that's... Yeah, yeah I, walk, I walk in circles now. Is that a... It can I can imagine. Swiss Army knife. Swiss Army knife. Harmonica? Harmonica? No, it's Swiss Army knife. Swiss Army knife. Oh, I used to have one not yeah. as elaborate as that, but I then I lost it from in the book. See your beat? Get that up very close. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh. And you want to hand her a copy of your poem? Yes. We've already gone through her poem, but... Uh, I'm not saying that to chide you. Mm, I'm not to chide you. I, 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 I but, hang my um, head in another, another moral despair. Abyssal, abyssal moral despair. Jeez. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> You're going to lean. You have to list to one she's side. Walking. She's I'm walking, I'm walking in circles she now. She walks in circles because she's like canted off to the right. <laughs> I believe this in, uh, I'm crumpian, I guess. I bite my tongue. What's the that's occasion? <laughs> for what? That rhymes with the trumpian. No, I just, I, like that. I, that's how, my, I've always carried my keys, and usually they're in my pocket rather than loose. And I've been carrying my knife for the past few weeks, so it's nice to have on hand. Not for any, any um, self-defense, because too, it takes too much time to get the, to get the blade out. The blade's probably too dull, but you know, it's really not made, and do a good little head conk with it. And you never know when you're oh. going to need a little flashlight or no, and a whistle. There's a note that says, my pet is home alone. <laughs> so, okay. it's a useful thing. <laughs> Shall we carry on? <laughs> any more to any more bear my heartstrings for? Okay. <laughs> the Look at the colors. <laughs> it's a rainbow. I know, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the neighborhood Thanksgiving dinner comes to us because of the season and also because a couple of neighborhoods are considering such an event. Wow, well, do well, speak up. Okay. Neighborhood Thanksgiving dinner. Purposes. Our purposes are to prepare a dish of food to share some. To invite our household family, friends, and neighbors to come. To cite the pilgrims and native Indians' purpose for their first Thanksgiving. And to discuss our thankfulness for our neighborhood where we're living. Our purposes are to meet with the extended hand, they greet, to greet, with a warm hug, to learn our neighbors' names, to learn our neighbors' work and their games, with which we might share on days when it rains. Our purposes are to connect, to reflect, to learn where each one is from, to learn how to be a better friend with each other as with a little sister or a big brother. Our purposes are to reflect on our common and divergent heritage that builds our knowledge of each other to become a sage, to learn to appreciate our neighbors of an elder age who might become a surrogate grandparent role who lives near, who may bring to our family some attention, love, and good cheer, to provide a connection with our neighbors who are disabled, to become acquainted as friends and not just as a label. Our purposes are to become a good neighbor, to develop a good neighborhood, to be neighbors who care, to be neighbors who share, Toys for boys, thrills for girls, pans for the woman, tools for the repairman, a warm smile, an encouraging word, a visit, and a helpful hand. Our purpose is to become friends who help each other and willing to lend, who will negotiate our attitudes to men so our neighborhood images a cooperative trend with a warm smile, a wave, and helping hand. 
with a song in my heart singing, won't you please be my baby? <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> I can hear Mr. Roberts saying that. <laughs> no. Please be my neighbor. <laughs> I didn't quite have his uh -huh. voice for it. <laughs> Will you have a large group? Neither, neither did he really either. <laughs> Will you have a large group of people, do you think? A lot of neighbors? Well, the west side neighborhood actually had one two years ago, and there were 60 people that came and Last year it was 80, and the uh, Far East Side neighborhood is meeting tomorrow night about this topic. So how many? Who knows? <laughs> we just have a door and open it and see the shows. But 80 people are coming to your house? No, no. The uh, West Side is held at the Central Avenue Methodist Church, so that's a good space. And the Far East Side would be at the near Community Center if it happens. We have it. Both of those are projected for Sunday the 13th. One at 3.30 and the, the second one at 4.30. Oh my that's God. Our, the discussion that's going on. Why do you have two manses? What? Why do you have two manses? Well, one is a different side of town. Then why do you do two different sides of town? Well, I don't. It's the neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, the city has official neighborhoods. Yes. So that's the answer to your why. It's for that neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, they gather. That's a whole thought yeah. about it. And it's uh, beyond most of our stretches of. Uh, becoming acquainted with those we never see <laughs> you know, across town. But why are you driving to different neighborhoods though? Why not? This is this <laughs> could be a challenge for all neighborhoods. So, so uh, is, is, it, is, it, is one of the houses an old house of yours that you used to you used to live? No. It's not Why? going to be in a house. I, I know, but, but if they were to use it, you should have a house in the neighborhood. To belong to a neighborhood. Well, or dear friends. We're that, trying to connect it larger than just, you know, one, two or the, three houses. Over the mine. Okay. It's for the okay. kind of the official definition of the neighborhood by the city's okay. geography. Okay. Map. Whatever. <laughs> okay. And it's, it stretches us to think of that. You the west side is about 250 houses or addresses, and the far east is 335. Yeah. Wow. Do you have many people from uh, indigent backgrounds uh, of our under, under bridge sleepers, or if we have any under bridge sleepers in Athens? Do we have any under bridge sleepers? sleepers? Any under oh, bridge sleepers? I don't know. I'm, I'm not one of them, so I don't okay. know what goes on. Good under works bridges. for the homeless is on the west side. Yes. So they do accommodate persons who have to, or found themselves living underneath the bridge. Or but we have none. But we have none of those, do we? Under, under the bridge, anyway. I mean, the good works are. There's no one. Um, no, mm -hmm. there are. There <laughs> are. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, people right around the area, right here. There'll be people that stay and put up a tent sometimes. Okay. I didn't uh, realize that we have, we have. Yeah. The far east side was having a picnic that's commonly in August. And uh, in setting it up, there was a gentleman who walked out of down the trail to Sells Park. And uh, he said, What's going on? I said, Oh, we're having a neighborhood picnic. Oh, may I join you? Sure. Where do you live? Up in the tent. Other neighbors, neighborhoods yeah. that That'd be nice. It's it's good. At the the last line of the second stanza, I think you should take out with, so it just reads, uh, their games, which we might share on days when it rains. The with is, um, is not necessary. Then one, two, three, fourth stanza, one, two, three, fourth line, I would change become to fulfill. Fulfill a surrogate grandparent role. And also on the first line, I think the last word, son, might be under, um, too much. Or 
purposes are to prepare a dish of food to share. But he wants something to rhyme with come. <laughs> some come here and need some to rhyme with come. Oh. For that oh. It's a whole forced rhyme. You want to maybe some. play with that. Oh. And then in the last stanza, the second line, who help each other and are willing to lend. Last line, what stands? Last stanza. The last stanza, it's the second line. Oh, oh okay, yeah. I see it. Who help each other and are willing to lend. Thank you. And also, I think, in that third stanza, where you have, as with a little sister or a big brother, I think if you said, as with a sister or a brother, because um, I'm not sure, you know, I am the little sister in my family, but that, I just think it would be better not to well, you build a, you, you build a big stick, though, I assume, right? Well, I had one hand, yes. <laughs> Stick in your pocket like I do. Yeah, I'd fall over sideways. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my turn. Okay. all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, before I read my poem, I want to do something else special to acknowledge that we're greatly diminished by the death of one of our, our members, uh, Joy, who is not yes. with us, and we're, we're saddened by that. And in honor of her, I want to read a poem by Emily Dickinson. A poem that gave me comfort when my wife passed away uh, in 1999. So I'm going to read it quickly, and then I'll give it to Sven, who's here with my condolences. After great pain, a formal feeling comes. The nerves sit ceremonious like tombs. The stiff qu heart questions. The feet mechanical go round a wooden way of ground or air or aught regardless grown, or quartz contentment like a stone. This is the hour of lead, remembered if outlived, as freezing persons recollect the snow, first chill, then stupor, then the letting go. I will pass that to you, Thank you with Thanks. my condolences. My little ditty is, is uh, weird, to say the least. I'm not uh, sure it's the point, but it's a bunch of words. I can have, everybody's got one. Did you not get one? Sorry. And it's it's uh, called Ruins. Ruins. Remainders and Reminders. The ruin motif pervaded 18th century Europe. Ruined depiction became a trope and a cult. Ruined lust and ruined Ophelia ran so rampant that gentry planted sham ruins in their gardens. <laughs> Today, <coughs> poets, artists, architects, and novelists continue this fixation upon ancient remnants, seeing them isomorphic to the human condition exemplifying our anxiety about aging and death. Poet Joseph Brodsky said his poor teeth were like the ruined columns of the Parthenon. <laughs> oh. Ruins are symbolic reminders of our mortality. Crumbling monuments are our memento, that should be memento, by the way, M -E -M, memento mori, M-E-M-E-N-T-O, memento mori, what old person has not felt the inevitability of physical decline and impending ruination? Yet, as Browning said in Love Among the Ruins, we have love as a comfort and an anodyne. <laughs> a little bit more uh, pleasant than Ozymandias, Ozymandias, which I think is probably one of the best Poems were power and for you know ruination as a, as a subject. Yeah. Look upon my works, ye mighty and despair. 
I just want to remind you that Emily Dickinson's other poem, or part of her poem line was, we grow not older, but newer every day. Yeah. Newer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, there's a certain uh, Janice two-faced nature of uh, ruins because they point to a past that will never come back but to in a future that will never be but they also point to the fact that there was greatness and there can be greatness and we ought to savor the moment carpe diem uh, live your life don't don't uh, we're not dead yet let's uh, right. <laughs> let us celebrate being alive uh, yeah. but, sure. you know but be conscious that you know that uh, we have our every uh, fame is fleeting, life is fleeting, uh, it's temporary, so we ought to relish it while we have it. What were you going to say? Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like a reverse selfishness. You know, that self is so damn important, but then you look around and you see that others have traveled this path and others have done these works and yeah. so on, and yeah. it clears one's status a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. If anyone really wants to abandon their selfishness, who would ever want to do that? <laughs> Who would ever want I'm to do that? I'm too selfish to It doesn't have to be a morbid uh, obsession with death. It can be a, a, a powerful incentive to look toward the future and to savor the, savor the moment. But it really is remarkable. In the 18th century, the, the European art world went crazy over ruins and on memento mori. I mean, it seemed like every painting had a skull in it or a clock or a... a an hourglass or something that had this very clear skeleton behind the figure <laughs> that you know that was reminding that death was coming and and they all quoted the ancient Romans because after a, a Roman general had a conquest they had a parade and they uh, insisted that a slave accompany the general in the parade and whisper behind him as the crowd was screaming his glory that Fame is fleeting. <laughs> Death <Death-a> awaits. <laughs> Don't be too proud because uh, this is a passing moment. And so anyway, it was. Uh, we still continue that. We love ruins. I mean, I love ruins. I've been to the ruins of Angkor Wat and the wind ruins of Rome and Greece, and uh, we marvel at them and we say, "Wow, what wonderful glories there were!" And and how uh, perhaps there'll be new ones in the future. And how, how they build most of them. And we don't, yeah, we marvel at how they build the pyramids, for God's sake. Well, we still uh, debate it, don't we? Uh, the, the one monastery that's on that the cliff's face. Yeah. The, the monastery is some places, but I don't know. Oh, the cliff. one that, the, yeah, that, that got blown up? No, it's, up, oh. it's still there, hanging on tenacious. Mount Rushmore? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead anyway. <laughs> I find it interesting <laughs> with them. Um, Antiques Roadshow and mm -hmm. how the things that are everyone wants or think are the most wonderful and the highest prices and then they go down, you know, and you just see the difference of what people a admire or think is special. Look, black velvet paintings. Yeah. Yeah. I go in when I was a little kid. That's a lot okay. of the paintings say, but you know, you just don't know, and it's really interesting to see the. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the Picasso, I remember Picasso. I mean, I know, I know what he's doing, but I remember why I would want one. <laughs> 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 I'll take a picture. There's this idea that it, it's uh, worth a lot more long after it was first made. Well, I think the typical yeah, statement is, I don't know anything about this picture. Right. And it's been in the garage for the last 30 yeah. years, you know. Yeah. And yet yeah, it's worth thousands of dollars. Yeah. Oh, well, that's wonderful. You know, <laughs> it's been in, buried in the garage or behind the, in the back of the oh, closet oh, for oh. all these years, but now it's money. Yeah. Aha. Lots of money sometimes. It's money. <laughs> but but they, they literally didn't see it properly, you know. And I think that's the work of the poet is to help us see more properly, to see better in life. And art in general is to see better. Mm -hmm. I thought you were the optometrist. Do <laughs> 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 you think Robert Kewen has some legacy? Uh, who? Robert Kewen. Precisely. Robert Kewen. Robert Kewen. I'm remembering that name, but not able to... You were not, you're not missing a damn thing. 
Yeah. As far as his epistles go. Educated in money, not in art. That's what I think. I hope you don't mind that I did this then, but I brought a poem of joys. Oh. In addition, I wrote a poem too. Oh oh, 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 right, sorry, sorry, darling. That we yeah. do object to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I did not get a poem written. Uh, I started several, but so I ended up with uh, Vizla Zimborska's, one of her poems. She's great. In praise of my sister. My sister doesn't write poems, and it's unlikely that she'll suddenly start writing poems. She takes after her mother, who didn't write poems, and also her father, who likewise didn't write poems. <laughs> I feel safe beneath my, my sister's roof. My sister's husband would rather die than write poems. <laughs> and even though this is starting to sound as repetitive as Peter Piper, the truth is, none of my relatives write poems. <laughs> my sister's desk drawers don't hold old poems, and her handbag doesn't hold new ones. When my sister asks me over for lunch, I know she doesn't want to read me her poems. Her soups are delicious without ulterior motives. Her coffee doesn't spill on manuscripts. There are many families in which nobody writes poems. But once it starts up, it's hard to quarantine. <laughs> Sometimes poetry cascades down through the generations, creating fatal whirlpools where family love may founder. My sister has tackled oral prose with some success, but her entire written opus consists of postcards from vacations, whose text is only the same promise every year. When she gets back, she'll have so much, much to tell. <laughs> and this is so much like my family. <laughs> so but I have one, one person, my mother wrote poems always. <laughs> um, yeah, she, she, she did. And, uh, There's a new Simborska collected poems just published, as some of you may know. I haven't picked it up yet, but I certainly am willing to. <laughs> But this is funny because this my sister doesn't write poems <laughs> at all, and she's it's funny because she she goes to Florida every year and sends postcards. <laughs> 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 uh, this poem was so much reminded me of the title of it is "My Sister Doesn't yeah. Write Poems." In praise of my oh. sister. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Because it it sort of fits my family, except my father recited poems. Poems. He didn't write any, but he recited them mm -hmm. constantly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what, what a richness that added to your life. Well, oh, I'm true. not objecting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> poems last night, you know, s somehow I had saved these, and um, uh, I started laughing, and I thought, oh, thank you, Joy, and I decided I better bring it and share it, so, um, because it's hers, that extraordinary thing, the pickle, 417, 7, 15, uh, Joy, Let's don't get mired down in pronunciation. Who cares if it's extraordinary or extraordinary? Oh, sorry. This is about pickles, not words. Almost anything can be pickled. Pig's feet, beets, cabbage, shrimp, mostly. Everyone loves plain old cucumber pickles. Dilled, sweet, crisp in hot dogs and hamburgers alongside your sandwich. A Chinese friend once said the only vegetable she had in the winter as a child was cabbage, boiled or pickled. It was what she ate when she and her mother were sent to mine coal north of Beijing in Mao's time, a revolution, a persecution. In my family, we threw nothing away. The white inside of watermelons became pickles. 
Once I ate ackee and pickled codfish. Life is good. Pickles are better. <laughs> Let's think about it. Even if you have no idea of how to make a pickle, something happens when your mouth becomes infected with a pickle's malt decomplex zingers. Yippee, hoorah, and golly gee, pickles are great for you. And and the one on the back side, I hope you got that too. This was so sweet. I just had to include this because she speaks about love and its transcendence. My host and friend said, this is my granddaughter, Ellen. The young girl snapped a look at him, quickly correcting himself. Oh, no, it's my granddaughter, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> For in that moment of time travel, which I've done myself, I'd say that love is on a continuum. The love of the daughter, the love for the grandchild, it is the same. Is it that when we discover loving in ourselves, we cannot across time separate in these swift time travel moments, one adored, one from another? We see the child of both generations, the eyes of the mother, the slender body of the child, the baby held close, the feel of a daughter's hand, and for the flashing of time's inability to stay in one place, we misspeak. My kids usually say, I'm the other one. <laughs> 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 Some of you may remember that that really happened. Um, it came at my house when, I, when Joy and Stan came to the door, I, yeah. I said, and my uh, granddaughter Chloe was, was helping me be a host, an hostess. And, uh, and sure enough, I miscalled my granddaughter, uh, Chloe. I called her Ellen, named my daughter. Yeah. And I thought, it's a beautiful thought. And I have shared this with, uh, with both Chloe and my daughter. And they, okay. have, they have copies of it. And they, yeah. love, they love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the interesting thing about Joy and her denial that she's a poet you know, her stuff always comes off so poetic. She often, I think, goes away the prize from these meetings of being the most poetic. Yeah. But what she would do is she'd say, oh, I got, I got to write a poem. She'll go to the computer, she'll sit there for 10, 20 minutes, and she's done. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, okay. So uh, it, it, this is all in her, and it just, with the cue, it just poured out. Yeah. No matter what it is, funny, crazy, yeah. you know, angry. Yeah. Uh, it's the mood of, mo mood of the moment, and she just put it down. Yeah. Just, uh, That's amazing. amazing. I would have a poem like wandering yeah. around the desktop for days <laughs> as I'm trying to do something with it. But, uh, she's... Yeah. Ten minutes and she's done. That's I it. felt like she was totally tapped into her creativity at all times because of everything she did. I mean, there was always a show happening, you know. We'd walk in here and there were sometimes her art on the walls or the restaurant or anything like that. It was just mm -hmm. amazing. So she's a huge inspiration to me. And this is my poem here, Garden Holiday. At day's end, preparing for bed, I found I had forgot a small red tomato in my vest pocket. <laughs> now split in two places, but mostly intact, enough for one tasty vegan BLT. A precious harvest from my waning garden that surreptitiously hijacked me. All previous plans erased, election year politics ditched, <laughs> the dismal state of female sexual harassment suspended as I pulled up deer-eaten Brussels sprouts, weeds, dead limbs now clipped and trimmed, just shocked at the neglect of my estate, and then as well that I cared. The grapevine was choking the lilac and the blackberry vine I thought I'd lost who was really just growing over a bit inside my blackberry thorn bush, using it for symbiotic support. Accidentally, I stepped on a Janie marigold and clipped a budding green pepper. In my haste, nay, excitement on this beautiful blue skyed October day, where nature had grown wild, completely capturing me to set me free. 
I, I hope that conveyed the rapture I felt. <laughs> yes. Did you eat the poor thing then? You know, I would have if I'd woken up early enough. I have, oh, on poetry night, I always say I'm so late. It's just such a, a difficulty to get up. So what are we going to put the, 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 the wither on the, on the counter? Talk I'll have it for dinner. Okay, okay. It's an extra for a tomato. Yeah. I used to wither well, I mean, see, this was one of my lessons from Joy, who took the pickle. You know, yes, you can write about a small, broken tomato in your pocket. Mm -hmm. it, nothing is beneath us. <laughs> and as you say, it, it really helps a lot to get around this distressing stuff. I would much rather talk to a tomato. We <laughs> 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 have been listening to <laughs> all. Oh, yeah. Two more weeks and two days. That's all you have to do. Then we can divorce ourselves from the... Although I, I was put in the, at the news when I made, made, made a very nasty comment about him. Did you? An, 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 an onanistic twat. Okay. You put it in? Yeah, but I put it in the submission. Oh, good for you. Recently? Yeah, that's the one day before last. Those were really wonderful. Good. She's not here. She would like my book. All of that. Half Joyce voice. That was wonderful. I knew someone who came to Yes, I had to clean up after around the cage of a parakeet. Yes, they're very messy, but Cassie's seed upon the ground. Okay, well, Cassie's gravel too. <laughs> and it's past tense seed. Okay, <clears throat> now these poems. I may have had in here before. They've both been worked on, and so, uh, and I'm, I entertain any corrections, changes, alterations, or sustained applause if that's what you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> Age 10 at Springfield Township School. Everywhere I looked, I was surrounded by relatives. A younger brother below me, three siblings above, an aunt teaching a lower grade, father was on the school board, mother was a factor in the PTA. It was hard enough just to be me without having to live up to or live down <laughs> all those folks who answered to the same last name I did. <laughs> 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 Thousands of us. Uh -huh. <laughs> there was a factor in the PA. PTA. I love that. It was that. hard enough just to be me. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. people are always saying, you know, comparing you to mm -hmm. yeah. one or the other of all of those millions of people. Right. None of whom actually lived up to the standards I set, but you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you were stuck being their diplomat. Right. Yeah. 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 I had to try to Try to appear humble. Uh, <laughs> burning. The sirens screamed past me, hauling the heavy fire trucks through traffic that parted like the Red Sea. I could not, as yet, see smoke or flames, but I could smell whatever was burning, burning. It smelled of coming suddenly alert, of apprehension, and then of realization. It smelled of fear, of panic, and then it smelled of dismay and loss. I still could not see flames. <laughs> wow. Nobody's saying anything. Well, yeah, you're, you're because it's like of... a metaphor, I guess, mm. you know, or, I mean, it could be the real, describing mm. an actual scene, but it could be a metaphor, too, of something Oh, the realization of what is comes yeah. slowly. Yeah. Your house or not your house? Um, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Is this going to be something of hers? No, actually. It actually it came from, I don't know, I think because it happened, the line, the siren screamed past me hauling the heavy fire trucks. That just sort of came into my head, and I like that 
picture mm -hmm. of that it was actually the noise no, that was moving the truck, moving and, the the truck. The and then mm -hmm. thinking, well, you know, where the, and some people are were troubled by the the I could not smell whatever was burning burning. Mm -hmm. They said why the double burning, but um, no, that's it's that's doing it. Do you think sense. it needs a comma after no, the no? No, that's the way we talk, right? Okay, it seemed all right to me, but someone did question it. No. So. Well, in, in that first line that caught your imagination, we got the marvelous alliteration, the sirens screaming and hauling the heavy. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what sets us going. Well, my dog, I'll go with ooh during any, any, any alarm. They, they go howling along with the fire engine, <laughs> cop, whatever. And it'll add to the other, yeah, it'll turn to the other, go, ooh. Maybe they're just shouting imprecations back at whatever the oh. siren is howling at them. Maybe. Doggy language or some persuasion. They certainly take exception to the coyotes. Okay. A did he filled life. The universe is a large, wonderful, and mystery laden place. Its origin from a singularity. Or the conjunction of two or more black holes from the machinations of the, the mind hand of God. What was before the realm of singularity? The black holes or holes, or the mind or hand of God. It's a moot point. The human mind cannot comprehend any of it. Mathematical conjectures or deity driven theosophizing are just noise to pacify the brain while failing to perceive the splendid entirety. Enti eternity or the lack of of a comprehensible beginning, moral, and ideological trajectory, and a satisfying end, or limitations of maybe original sin. For trying to think, act, and foresee as a god is the ultimate act of hubris. Maybe the elephant's on the back of a turtle and swims through the ether of space in such a better silly idea after all. Where it how's the edge? <laughs> Just turtle it all the way down. Yes. <laughs> I love this. I love this too. Great. <laughs> and of course, there is no edge. Well, the Flat Earth Society and the Donald Trump Society, there might be a, a, an edge someplace. <laughs> he puts me on edge, that's yeah, for sure. Oh, you got to be over it. Yeah. He lives on the edge, that's for sure. You know, she's got her Therber shirt on this yeah. today, so. <laughs> There's humor <laughs> in the air. And cuddliness. Is it comprehensible or comprehensible? I don't care. You don't care. That's <laughs> <laughs> her word. The hell are the rest of you? Oh, yeah, that's a probably. Oh. <laughs> but you comprehend, you don't, you don't comprehend. That's true. I know. But that isn't the way the language works. With the language then, figuratively. <laughs> 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 Only figuratively, not the only figuratively. Which move language will I have to do? You have to look it up. Then you, well, at least could look it up on his gadget. The gadget. <laughs> 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 Soldier. Oh, the crotchet is a honey roll. Thank you. Sound effect. Well, and two, if you're ever thinking of derivation, how is a cross crossing? I mean, how is it? How well, is, is, it, is, it, is it like the cro Well, actually, crochet comes from the French word for a hook. But you, you just wonder, you know, is this like a, a horny old man <laughs> that's crotchety? We have to that's hear this from the uh, huh? association. <laughs> <laughs> old soldier. He knew he was crotchety. He'd forgotten how to love. His cane held him upright and allowed him to kick at stones along the winding path home. He wanted for nothing but stones to kick and maybe a bone to pick once he arrived. 
being crotchety was safe. He knew it and they knew it. And at night after supper, he could be found down in his old soldier's foxhole. That is, that's interesting, the way you repeat certain words consistently throughout the poem. And Don't anybody ask what caused me to write this. I have no idea. <coughs> you ne you've never <coughs> seen an old soldier, especially a crotchety one, no? <laughs> <laughs> or have you? Well, I was sitting, I was sitting at my computer and, you know, what comes, what comes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My dad was in a foxhole for three years mm -hmm. in France. Oh, and wow. I know wow. that, I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. I could certainly see how three he'd years. be crotchety and more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The same foxhole? Three years. Is oh, <laughs> that not the same area? Oh. And, you know, foxholes. Yeah. Could yeah. be in a trench for three years, Trenches. but that was another war. Yeah. Yeah, that was the different. second world war. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My uncle died there. Oh my God. Do you have an image of the foxhole as it came out of your computer? <laughs> <laughs> did you see it? What did it look like? No, no. It's just the old soldiers wanting to be safe and not get entangled. And he, he is vulnerable, but he wants to be safe and protect himself. I think it struck me as a very nice conceit. Mm -hmm. that, that yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, you know, you sort of get a picture of a, a man cave kind of or a turtle, but. Well, and the, uh, you might just be a turtle. I mean, the <laughs> idea that being crotchety was safe, I thought was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And keep people away and... Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Keeps you in your mm -hmm. foxhole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody relating to general of a region, too, it can be fast entertaining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you. And your your poem reminded me of uh, the very famous poem by Yeats called Sailing to Byzantium. <laughs> Do you remember it? It's it a wonderful letter there. I looked it up to be sure I got it right. An aged man is but a paltry thing, a tattered coat upon a stick. Wow. Soul clap its hands and sing. It goes on, but a, mm -hmm. a tattered coat upon a stick. Can you I see a guy walking along with his stick in a Coat and a crotchety old man. Is it a yeah. scarecrow or is it a crotchety old man? And yeah. what's the difference? And who cares? <laughs> <laughs> That's so it's described my father at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's so perfectly skinny. apt to both. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. sticks in your mind forever. On all the names of Byzantium, Istanbul, Constantinople, I mean, it, it, it just the poetry of the name of the city is just, it's just always so amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it called? Uh, traveling to Byzantium. Yeah, Byzantium. Traveling to Byzantium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. By Yates. It's depressing but good. William Butler Yates. Very depressing. His great. He's Beautiful. A, one of the great poets. Mm -hmm. I like uh, the hosting of the she. The host is running from Nopnera over the cliff, over the graves, close in the bar. I am calling him away. Come away. Empty your hearts of its mortal. <laughs> I've heard the rest of it, but it's just that it's such a Gaelic old. I mean, this is you can see the, the bones of England. I had to fight against the tendency to want him to come home and 
fall in love with the dog or some dumb thing. <laughs> That's a very nice thing to fall in love or with. Or the rocking chair. No. <laughs> <laughs> or a tomato. <laughs> or a pickle. What the hell? Right. <laughs> or a pickled tomato. <laughs> Everybody have a copy? Yes. yes. Very often. If we're ready. Mm -hmm. Are we ready? Are we ready? I got some leftover copies here coming back. To okay. The uh, poem in early season closing was actually something that occurred to me a couple of weeks prior to the 13th of October. And I just dated it that date because I added the last line then. An early season closing. The wind blows across my face and sends chills to my love. The leaves, browning early from the drought, dry, descend, drop on the closing earth. It's quiet. There has been howling and rustling before the pace of earth on this side has slowed to sleep, joyless through winter. Death takes all life from a lively face. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. It's beautiful. It's yeah. It is a beautiful poem. That last line uh, came to me maybe an hour after her passing where I'd been looking at this face for 60 some years and I'm sorry. No, that's good. Fine. As long as it changes something you don't want to see it ever. You never wanted to see. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful poem, and she would have loved to hear it. Yeah. And the thoughts that you have in it, it's beautiful. It's interesting that, because you said you had written this sometime earlier, that the, the last line of the original poem, where you have joyless in there, mm -hmm. it's a, a double Meaning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it occurred to me as joyless, but then I see it with her name there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then the E. E. Cummings is sort of a curiosity. Uh, this was published in the Writer's Almanac the next day, October 14th. And uh, when in our early, early days, we both got a lot of pleasure out of Cummings, yeah. and uh, it was her heart that killed her, and so I just, I couldn't possibly read that. Mm -hmm. If one of you wishes to be my guest, I couldn't possibly get through it. I carry your heart with me. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true. And it's you who are whatever a moon has always meant, and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root, and the bud of the bud, and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. That's beautiful, too. I assume Cummings was widowed, huh? Widowed. I don't know if you want to have Cummings at all. 
the prison life anyway. Mm, I love this one. It's beautiful. You know about Sven? Pardon me? You know about Sven? You know anything about his, his personal life, Cummings? I used to know of his personal life. Uh, that's years and years ago. What, what? He was married, wasn't but he? And he was a bit old, wasn't he? He was married and he was an obnoxious person to most people, <laughs> uh, despite his, you know, and a lot of people didn't appreciate what he did with poetry either. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't recall anything about his marital life. I just remembered one line of his. Whoever pays any, uh, any thought to the syntax of things will never wholly kiss you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yes. considering physically, yeah, you never know, you never actually touch touching the person. You only be halfway there, halfway there, and halfway there at work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if an item, so I mean, you can never. Mm -hmm. I just think of that sometimes. It comes to me. The flutter of your eyelids is more than something, something. I don't quite cut it. <laughs> but he had a nice way with words, and that's a beautiful poem. But I'm not sure it's any more beautiful than yours, Ben. So this poem is um, messed up with, I don't know. Do you have another one? I've got more than I've <laughs> Lots of dashes and things that should not be there, so Patricia, you might have some fun with it. <laughs> oh, um, I'm Yeah, I'll tell you about this other side. Um, okay. Everybody have one? Yeah. Blood Sisters. I remember when we were friends, swearing our loyalty to the end. Blood Sisters. We were in the fourth grade. You pilfered your brother's Boy Scout knife, polished and glinting in the light, until we touched the lethal edge, an alternative tool would have to suffice. <laughs> a sewing needle to pierce our skin made only a little shiny bead, right, bright red, almost enough to, breath, to press our arms and mingle our vital fluids. Someone told the teacher, Mrs. Iyer scowling and fierce, I was melting down to the floor. You, so far away across the room, an endless distance. The teacher decreed we could get locked jaw, <laughs> never to talk or eat, and maybe die of suffocation. Then the bell rang for recess. Dismissal time, I was distraught, my hot cheeks a roaring sound pounding in my ears. I thought I could go home, but should I turn back, stumbling along the railroad tracks? Mrs. Iyer phoned my mother. I don't remember the words my mother said, but I began to breathe, her hand on my shoulder. She nodded her head. Regardless of my catastrophe, my mother was standing up for me. <laughs> oh, that's great. my blood back when I was thinking about if, if you're doing the act, and actually do mingle the blood and get it back into the other person, could you set up an a antigen, antigen reaction then? Well, not what we were doing. No, they don't. a scratch that was <laughs> nearly nothing. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. It's one of those things that you never yeah. forget, you know, yeah. that moment that you can be in that mm -hmm. time, which was so terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and then the teacher I'll made it worse. I'll tell yeah. you what you never forget, <sighs> too, is when your parent stands up for you. Oh, my gosh. Yes. That was yes. just so amazing. Mm -hmm. I did not expect it. I thought maybe I shouldn't go home. And my mother was like, she was totally there. She could have run that teacher right down. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh. Oh.